Hello everyone, my name is Alan McCannon, uh, also known as Wham. Uh, today we're going to talk about stance, gun mount, and gun fit. We're not going to go into a lot of uh, heavy details about gun fit. We're going to focus more on gun mount. Uh, you have to have a proper stance to make a proper gun mount, but you also have to have a gun that fits fairly close to make a proper mount. So that's one reason we're going to talk a little bit about fit. Uh, we'll start with stance. Stance is about shoulder width apart, toes or feet just slightly spread open. You want to bring your weight being I'm right-handed, over my left leg, my knee slightly bent, and I've got about 70% of the weight on my left leg. This enables me to rotate from the hips. That's very important because your whole upper body needs to be locked in place. Now, we'll talk a little bit about the fit. Uh, fit is very important. Uh, the gun has to relatively be a close fit to even get started. And if you're a new shooter, I can assure you it's going to take a few years before you actually know exactly what kind of fit you need. Why is fit so important? Why is gun mount so important? Gun mount is important one big reason. You have two sights on a shotgun. Your front sight and your rear sight. Your rear sight is your eye. Your rear sight must be locked in place and be in the same place every time. That's the reason gun mount is so important. Now we'll talk a little bit about how we're going to get to this gun mounting stage. First of all, the gun has to be close as what we call length of pull. That is the length from the trigger to the end of the recoil pad. Now a good way to um, get a close measurement of the length of pull is there's a ligament right here in your arm. If you drop your arm down by your side, bring it up to 90 degrees, bring it Take a straight edge, lay it against this ligament right here, and stretch it out, stretch your hand out flat like somebody's wanting to hand you some money, uh, and measure to this first joint right here. That's going to get you r relatively close to the right length of pull. I've made stocks for new shooters, experienced shooters, world champions, and from what I've seen, this measurement and the way I just showed you to measure generally gets me within an eighth of an inch plus or minus the correct length of pull. Now there's exceptions to every rule and the things that I'm telling you are things that I've learned from all the years of experience that I've had making stocks, fitting guns to shooters, and, and competing. Now another important uh, factor about gun mount and gun fit. I'm going to lay a straight edge right on top of the rib of this gun. This distance from here to here is what we call cone height. This distance, if you notice where this drops down, this distance right here, just for a reference, is what we call drop at the heel. Now cone height is very important because when you mount the gun, if this comb height is too high, you're going to look way over the rib. If it's too low, you're going to look at the back of the gun. You can't see what you're shooting at. As I told you earlier, your eye is the rear sight on this gun. So it's very important to the comb height to be right. Uh, a good way to check all this, we'll show you a little further along. Now, another thing I'm going to talk about is, for momentarily, is pitch. Pitch is the angle from parallel of the rib 
that this recoil pad is at. If you notice, it's at an angle this way. If you stand this gun up against a wall, or stand it up like this, you can see in the picture the gun is not vertical. That's vertical. This is it standing on the pad. The distance, if this was on the floor, the distance from this bead to the wall would be uh, how you would check pitch. It's not too scientific of a way, but uh, it, it gets you close. And the reason I'm mentioning pitch is women particularly are made different than men. They're a little broader in the chest, and women tend to stand a little more erect when they're shooting. So a woman has to have more pitch. If she doesn't, the toe of the gun is going to hit her first and the gun is going to rise up and it's going to cause it to slap her in the face. Now, uh, being we know these things, we got, we got to get our length of pull right and we got to get our comb height right and we need to be thinking about pitch, okay? So, uh, I'm gonna show you what I consider the proper way to mount a gun. The gun, you, you take the gun and you, I like to hold mine by my side. You bring the gun out away from your body and here comes the point that the length of pull is too long. If the length of pull is too long, I cannot get this gun away from me. It's going to drag up, up under my arm if it was too long. If this gun is the right length, so I'm going to bring the gun out, I'm going to bring it up to my face, and then I'm going to use my face as a reference point to drag this gun back into my shoulder, and then I'm going to rest my head on the stop. You, the key word there is I'm going to rest my head. I'm not going to put so much pressure that it hurts, but I have got to keep my head tight. And we'll mount it again from a little different angle here. Out to the face, back into the shoulder, head resting on the stock. If you look, I'm looking straight down the gun. My eyes are fairly level. My head is up, and I'm ready to make a good move. Now, there are several things that you can do wrong in a mount. Of course, you can mount it. You can bring the gun way too far in, too far out, too far down, too far up. All of these things can cause a problem. That's the reason I say use your face as a reference point. Bring your head back, tilt it slightly to the side, bring the gun to your face, back into your shoulder. That way, every time the gun goes in your pocket of your shoulder and it's in the same place every time. You have to mount your rear sight in the same place every time. Your rear sight, remember, is your eye. So it's very critical that your eye is in the right spot every time. Now, there's... Uh, Four contact points with you and the gun. Your hands, of course, your shoulder, and your face. You use your face as a reference point to bring the gun to your shoulder. The reason I mention your hands, uh, your left hand, or your forearm hand, you want the gun in your hand and you want to lay it in your hand. You want to hold the gun, but you do not want to deft grip the form. The right hand or your trigger hand, you want a good solid grip here and you want to, when you bring this gun to your face and bring it back, you want to pull this gun in tight with this hand. So you're actually controlling the gun with your, your trigger hand or right hand if you're right handed, left hand if you're left handed. This hand right here it's just along for the ride, wherever you're going to carry the gun. So, I can't stress enough how important it is to anchor your face to the gun. Now, the, um, when you do things right, 
as I mentioned a while ago, your head is going to be, you bring it out to your face and back, your head is going to be up. A lot of problems that shooters get into is they want to mount the gun too low, they want to push their head down like this. Well, the first thing that happens when something goes wrong is they want to bring their head up to where they normally carry it all day, every day. You don't walk around with your head like this. Unless you're like me every once in a while, I'm walking around like this, I'm trying to find some money on the ground or something. But, uh, I have found some before, but anyway, that's not the way I walk around all day. Uh, maybe I should. Uh, maybe I'd find more money. But anyway, another thing that you don't want to do, you don't uh, want to roll your head forward and crawl the stock. A lot of shooters do this. They'll, they'll get way up here and they'll roll their head down like this. Well, they're looking out of the tops of their eyes. Well, what happens when you look out of the top of your eyes and the target goes up? Well, if the target goes up, you're already looking out of the top of your eyes. Well, what's going to happen? You're going to pick your head up where you can see it. So, you got to remember the gun goes where the eyes go, and the, and the eyes have to stay locked and anchored on the stock. The rear sight of a shotgun is your eye. I can't stress this enough, and I can't stress enough how tight and how secure you have to keep that eye. Uh, for example, uh, if you've ever shot a pistol or a rifle, it has a rear sight. It is not your eye. If that sight is loose and it's moving left or right or up or down, it's going to change the point of impact of that bullet. Well, it's the same way with a shotgun. And I've made this uh, analogy before. I'm not going to Africa with a rifle and the rear sight loose and hunt dangerous game like a lion. Well, you know, if the rear sight is loose and a lion starts charging me, I'm probably not going to hit him, and I'm going to be that line sucker. Don't know about y'all, but I don't care about being ate by any, any kind of big animal. So, uh, remember to keep your head locked on the gun. And another thing you new shooters need to remember, it took me almost 16 years to come up with this stock that fits me like I want it to. You're not going to know exactly what you need. You're going to have to shoot. You're going to have to run some lead down the barrel. And when you do this, then uh, after a while, you will learn some things that you need as far as fit. But until then, we just want to get it close. And when we do, then we want to stay with that until we learn some of the basics. I'm going to go over the gun mount one more time. We're going to bring it out, we're going to bring it to our face, we're going to bring it to our shoulder, and we're going to rest our head on the stock. Out to the face, to the shoulder, resting the head. Eye center, I'm looking flat down the rib, and I'm ready to shoot. Uh, I'm Alan McCann. I hope this has been informative for you. I hope it will help. Good day.